in polite position. Thank you. The Honorable Head of Department of Food Science and Technology, Dr. Danar Papseptianga, distinguished guests, and distinguished speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Nurul Huda, and as we belong as all participants, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It has been an honor for me. My name is Graciela Amaris, and on behalf of Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to the third International Guest Lecture Week 2020. Before we move to the next agenda, I would like to inform you that this is a series of the event in four consecutive days. Today, we will have a lecture from Associate Professor Nurul Huda with a topic of recent updates on meat and fish processing technology. Before we begin to the event, we would like to invite all of you to listen Indonesia National Anthem, Indonesia Raya. Please join us with Sayon. everyone. Let me first of all introduce you to the agenda today. We will start with an opening remark from Dr. Danar Prabseptianga. As the head of Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas 11 Maret, Surakarta. A lecture by our invited guest, Associate Professor Nurul Huda from University Malaysia Sabah, and a discussion moderated by Dr. Setianirum Arifiani, STP Magister Science. And lastly, closing. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we are now going to listen to the opening remark delivered by Dr. Danang Praseptianga as the head of Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas 11 Maret, Surakarta. To Dr. Danang Praseptianga, times is yours. Thank you, uh, Ms. MC, uh, for the time. The Honorable Associate Professor Dr. Nurul Huda, our college from University Malaysia Sabah, Malaysia. The Honorable the Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas 11 Maret, Professor Dr. Saman Hudi. Colleges from Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas 11 Maret, and in particular from the Department of Food Science and Technology. All participants of the third International Guest Lectures Week of Food Science and Technology and students from the Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Plus Maret. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to all of you. Uh, 
personally and on behalf of the Faculty of Agriculture and the Department of Food Science and Technology, I would like to welcome you to the third International Guest Lecture Week of Food Science and Technology. This is a biannual event organized by the Department of Food Science and Technology Faculty of Agriculture that is usually conducted in parallel with uh, the event of an international conference on food science and technology. This activity is supported by the world-class university program by Universitas Blas Maret, and it will be lasted this week from October 12th to 15th, 2020. Uh, it is our great honor and I'm pleased to, uh, that this, in this activity, we can uh, invite world-class scientists such as uh, Professor Dr. Denny Cahyono from Coventry University, UK. Uh, that is uh, uh, our colleague from the UK. He, yesterday, he gave his uh, lecture. And Associate Professor Dr. Nurul Huda uh, from University Malaysia Sabah. Associate Professor Dr. Warapon Bonsuki from Kasusat University, Thailand. Professor Dr. Irwan Dijaswir from International Islamic University, Malaysia. They are really expert in their respective field. Thank you for all the lecturers for their valuable time to give a lecture and to share their experiences and uh, expertise in the third International Guest Lectures Week of Food Science and Technology. I hope this activity can be really meaningful, in particular for our students, our future generations, to get insight about recent issues in food technology and related areas. This is highly important because the students need to learn about the global trend in the world. Moreover, we can learn from the COVID-19 pandemic that the food sector is really able to survive to the disastrous situation of the pandemic. Therefore, I'm confident the lecture from all of the lecturers can convince all the students that they take a right choice for studying in the Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Nasmar. Last but not the least, I do hope that after this activity, the communication between our institution, UNS, and all the speakers can be continued. And therefore, we can initiate the collaboration in the future for various activities, including research and academic exchanges. To fulfill the request from the organizer team, I would like to officially open this uh, third International Guest Lecture Week of Food Science and Technology by Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Please enjoy and learn an insightful lecture that will be delivered by Associate Professor Dr. Nuru Huda today. Thank you very much. I give the time back to MC. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Danar Pasiptianga for the opening remark. Now, ladies and gentlemen, continuing to the next agenda is guest lecture by Associate Professor Nuru Huda. The lecture will moderated by Dr. Setianingrum Arifiani. Dr. Setianingrum Arifiani is a lecturer at the Department of Food Science and Technology, Universitas Blas Maret, Surakarta. She received her doctoral degree in food science from Universitas Gajah Mada. Her teaching and research activities are mainly related to the field of food chemistry, food and oil technology, food analysis, preservation technology, sensory analysis, and functional food. At present, her research pertains to an item to develop product of functional food by utilizing of local commodity and improved antioxidant commodity from the region. Dr. Setianigrum Arifiani has published many research articles in national and international journals. She also received some honorable from government and patent for her formula of functional beverage. So without any further ado, please welcome Dr. Setianigrum Arifiani. Thank you very much, Ms. Chris, for the time given and for the genuine introducing me. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. An honorable Professor Samanudi, as the Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, an honorable Associate Professor Nuruhuda, our guest lecturer today, an honorable Bapak Danar Prasetyanga, PhD, 
the head of the food science and technology department, and also the lecturers, students, and all attendees that I'm proud of. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Best wishes to all of us. It's honor for me, Setiani Ngurum Arifiani, to join you all act as a moderator for guiding this lecture session. On behalf of the third international guest lecturer week on food science and technology, hosted by the Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas 11 Maret, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Professor Nuru Huda for his kindness to share his insight and expertise on the meat and fish processing technology. First of all, please allow me to introduce our remarkable speaker, Professor Nuruda, from the Faculty of Food Science and Nutrition, University Malaysia Sabah. Well, I start with his education. He completed his undergraduate degree from the Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science. University of Kung Hatta, Padang. He obtained uh, his master's degree on food science at Bogor Agriculture University. And he conducted his doctoral degree on food science at University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Okay, we turn to his employment history. I think uh, Professor Nurul Huda have long, long uh, employment history. He started his career as a supervisor at PT Bahari Lestari, which ended in shrimp agriculture in Aceh. And furthermore, uh, Professor Nuruhuda worked as a lecturer in the Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science, University of Kung Hatta. And in uh, 2008, he served as the Vice Dean for Academic Affairs. And uh, from 2008 until 2016, Professor Nurul Huda joining with the Food Technology Program, School of Industrial Technology, University Science Malaysia, and or as Associate Professor in Food Technology. From 2018 until present, Professor Nurul Huda as Associate Professor at the Faculty of Food Science and Nutrition at University Malaysia Sana. Professor Nurul Huda is a person that a very, very uh, productive, he has produced various work, among other are 100 and uh, XT, uh, 189 uh, journal pro uh, publication uh, for about 20 international conference proceedings, for about 18 uh, paper presented in national and international conference, uh, 25 newspaper publication, several book chapter, book author, book translation, and he also has many, many experience as a keynote speakers, invited speakers, and also guest lecture. Professor Nuruda also uh, gained many, many awards from universities and also from the Malaysia government. Uh, he has its index of Web of Science of uh, 15 with uh, 56 publication and uh, more than uh, seven, Hundred citation. He also has its index of Scopus of 19 with 160 publication and more than uh, 1300 citation. Professor Nuruhuda has several research interests, among other are general food science and technology, food processing and preservation, especially in fish, meat, and animal based products. Nutrition evaluation of food product, nutrition and health, functional food, sensory evaluation of food product, and management of halal food. Besides active as a researcher, Professor Ruhuda also as a lecturer who has supervised more than 100 undergraduate students and approximately uh, 13 uh, graduate and uh, postgraduate students. Well, uh, before we jump into the lecture session, please allow me to inform the lecture session rules. 
Professor Nurul Huda, you have approximately one hour to present your presentation and then followed by the question and answer session for about 30 minutes. During the presentation, our attendee were asked to turn off or mute their microphone. For the students, lecturers, and other participants who will ask the question to the speaker, please click the right hand button, mention your name and uh, your question directly after inviting by the moderator. All uh, or all of you also can write your question in the chat room, in the Zoom or YouTube with the format of the name underscore question. Okay, uh, without further ado, please welcome Professor Nurul Huda, who will share his expertise on recent update on meat and fish processing technology. To Professor Huda, the time is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Setia Ningum, uh, and also to all of the uh, UNS uh, staff, academician, and student. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First, I want to uh, uh, present my appreciation uh, to UNS for the opportunity given to me to share uh, some of my experience uh, on the uh, meat and fish processing technology, especially to the Dean, Dr. Saman Hudi, to the Pond, uh, Jefferson, Dr. Danar, and also to all of the academicians from UNS. As well to my, uh, present my appreciation to uh, MC, Yes, and also to the moderator, uh, Dr. Setia Ningsi. Eh? So, uh, can I uh, start my presentation? Because I have uh, on, uh, six, uh, 59 uh, slides, uh, but I try to, to finish it quite early eh? because normally it is too, much, too, too many slides I prepare. So, because it's just only 60 minutes eh, for the presentation. Can I share my slide, uh, Dr. Setia Ningsi? Yes, of course. You can share your slide, Prof. Oh, host disable. Okay. Can you make me able to share my slide because I tried to share screen? Please, host. Oh, still? Yes. yes. No, you can, can you present and share your screen. Can, okay. I start again. Oh, still disable? Okay, host, can you make me able to share my slide? Okay, try again eh, to share my slide, share screen. Or oh, still disable? Uh, in our system, it's already open, Professor. Okay, because normally I share uh, wait, wait, wait. Here. I still uh, disable. Okay, with with the four minutes. Uh. Maybe for the speakers and moderator, you can wait for a minute because we will share I'm the here. presentation soon. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry. Sorry for. Uh, sorry for the and for the situation. Uh, uh, we will inform that moderator or speaker can share screen and the presentation. Okay. Shall we try again? Okay. Yes. Okay. 
Ah, steerable. Steerable. So, host need to allow me to share my screen. Okay, uh, uh, sorry for Pro Professor Nurohuda because uh, I get information from the committee that share screen can able to all of the participants to share the screen from the presentation. Okay, okay, we try again. Okay, thank you very much. No, still not. Still host disable participant screen sharing. Oh, still not able. Uh, host disable me to share my screen. Still, still disable. Okay. Uh, once again, uh, I, as a uh, behalf of the committee, uh, will say apologies for the uncomfortable situation. And now, uh, our team still still try to share the screen from the presentation. So I hope. Uh, from the speakers and moderator and all participants can wait for a minute and still stay in your position. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Nuruhuda, I apologize for this inconvenience, but uh, could you uh, leave this uh, break room early, uh, break room, breakout room, and then uh, you will go to the main room, and then uh, we can uh, to make you uh, become the co-host, please, uh, Professor Nuruhuda. Okay, I need to leave first, and then after that, I need to load, load again. Yes. Yes, you can. Leave. Yeah, to be clear, okay, I will leave first. I, I need to leave the room up a while and then a lot again, again. Yes. You can leave. Yeah, okay, this. I will leave now. Yeah, this breakout room only, Prof. Leave breakout room only, Prof. Huda. So you can leave. Uh, uh, leave breakout room. So you can enter the main room. Leave group only, yeah. here. So yeah. Leave so okay. not the not leave the meeting, but uh, leave breakout room. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Langsung.
Okay. Ya, yeah, welcome back to VIP room. Okay, okay. So, can I share my slide now? Yes, you can share. Uh, we are sorry for unconvenience condition. Okay, okay. Professor. Okay. okay, okay. Good, good, good. No, no, no. I can share my slide now. Okay, can you see my slide now? Yes, please. can see it. Okay, can you see okay. my screen? Yes, okay. Okay, oh. can I continue my presentation? Uh, yes, sure. Okay. Oh? Yes, sure. Okay, okay. My, the title of my presentation uh, is given by uh, Dr. Dana is about recent update on fish and meat processing technology. So actually, the, the original uh, title is a uh, recent update on meat and fish processing technology. But because uh, most of my slide is uh, related with my uh, previous uh, uh, research, which more on fish, and then I I need to modify the title. The first become first and followed by mid processing technology. So my name is Associate Professor Dr. Nuruda. I'm come from Faculty of Food Science and Nutrition, University of Malaysia Sabah at Kota Kinbalu, Malaysia. So before I proceed with my presentation, so let me introduce a little bit about my, uh, my university. So University of Malaysia Sabah is located at the northern part of the uh, Kalimantan, yeah? we call it Borneo, yeah? uh, the paling ujung, the edge of the Borneo Island, yeah? is Sabah is belong to Malaysia. So we have uh, four campus, uh, we have uh, three, uh, uh, four campus, uh, one is uh, Kota Kinabalu, the main campus is located in Kota Kinabalu, and then we have another two uh, branch campus, one in uh, Sandakan, and another one in uh, Pulau Labuan. Yeah? So uh, it's quite of uh, what you call it. Uh, this uh, university is established is around twenty years ago. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, thirty years ago, and one of the uh, public university in uh, Malaysia. So so far, Malaysia they have uh, around uh, twenty, uh, around twenty-seven, uh, thirty uh, public university around the uh, 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 peninsula and also the is uh, Malaysia. So this is the campus. Our campus is very, uh, very, very nice. Uh, look like uh, it's very green, and one of the uh, best green campus in Asia, and also in uh, Malaysia. So uh, I hope uh, after the pandemic is uh, finished, uh, some of the uh, ONS lecturer will able to pay a visit to our university to discuss and also to set up the collaboration between uh, UNS and, uh, and uh, UMS. So uh, I said it's uh, some picture uh, about uh, our university. It's a uh, mission previously. It's a very green uh, campus, a lot of uh, garden, a lot of uh, flowers there. Uh, and uh, so the design uh, with a proper design to represent the natural uh, uh, condition of the uh, Sabah. So we have also one of the uh, icon is uh, in our city is a, uh, a pink mosque. Uh, we have a pink mosque, and, and actually before the pandemic, uh, our mosque is one of the uh, tourism attractive. So uh, uh, normally uh, during the pandemic, is around six hundred to seven hundred tourists uh, enter our university to see to uh, enjoy the green environment in our university. So our uh, university is located, we have a hill, we have a beach, we have a, a garden. So it's a complete, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good uh, environment uh, for students and also to, to learn to, and also a good environment for the academician to, to teach, also to conduct some real, uh, research uh, according to their own uh, expertise. So this so is the faculty where I'm come now, where I join now. I belong to faculty of food science and diction. So, so far we have around uh, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, 11, 11 uh, faculty. And one of the faculty is belong to my faculty, my current faculty now is faculty of food science and uh, nutrition. So we have our four program under our faculty. What is our food science and nutrition is my program. Uh, bio, um, uh, bio process and uh, uh, program of food technology and bio process. Uh, program of nutrition and program of food uh, service. So we have uh, we offer uh, four program uh, under the uh, field of the food science and uh, nutrition. 
This is my 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 uh, my display, my uh, Google Scholar profile. I welcome to anyone, for whether from staff or from student, to contact me if you need more information related with the food science and technology. Uh, please feel free to email me or even to WhatsApp me. Yeah, I will try to entertain any request related with my my expertise in the field of food science and, and uh, technology. <clears throat> so before I proceed with uh, my President, I want to ask, apologize to uh, Dr. Dana because last minute I, I update a slide in Bahasa Indonesia, Pak Dana, because I want to try to close with the student because I think well, maybe it's the participant is student and then some of the uh, slide uh, I update in Bahasa Indonesia. Maybe I have to miss to, to, to teach in Indonesia, Dr. Dana. So please uh, forgive me because uh, last minute, I think two days ago, I update the slide to Indonesia. But the, what you get, uh, but most of the slide is belong to. Uh, screenshot eh? uh, yeah. okay so sorry <laughs> okay actually is uh, i will during the present i will focus on the uh, processing of uh, fish and meat yeah uh, which belong to the uh, waste material by product so for by product yeah from the by product eh? uh, because as we know uh, we we have some limitation to absorb to consume all of the the uh, fresh uh, product. So uh, in our, our country, uh, uh, able to produce a huge number of the uh, fish product. Yeah? We are one of the uh, country with a very, very uh, uh, huge number of the, for the production over there for marine fish and also for the uh, fresh water fish. And then we are not able to absorb all of the uh, fresh uh, product proceed with some uh, technology in order to preserve the quality of the uh, product, whether by uh, preservation method or by uh, processing method. Uh, because a little bit there is some difference between the preservative, preservative method and also with uh, processing uh, method. So for the processing, we can process according to a traditional method or according to the modern method, a sausage, uh, nugget, that uh, fillet is belong to the uh, modern uh, processing method. But I'm focused on the utilization of the byproduct, the limbah sisa. Yeah? I will focus on how we can use, utilize the byproduct from the uh, fish processing technology, also from the animal uh, processing uh, technology. So uh, because as you know, uh, around thirty percent for for to around thirty percent to forty percent from the uh, uh, fillet is belong to waste product, and then from the total um, body uh, weight of the uh, uh, piece, uh, uh, whether it belong to uh, marine fish or fresh water fish, is belong to uh, by product. So it's a huge number. So meaning, let's say if we are able to produce one ton uh, every day, meaning around 100, 600 kilo is belong to waste product. And then we need to think how to utilize this kind of the huge amount of the product efficiently and economically. Jadi kita perlu, we need to think, we need to find a way how to use this huge number of the bad product. We cannot throw out the bad product directly to the environment. We will make the environment polluted. The effect of the environment uh, will give the bad effect to the environment. If we simply throw out the waste product to the uh, environment, and then we need to find a way how to use, how to utilize this huge number of the bad product economically to produce uh, value added product. So the 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 bad product uh, can come from the from the sisa, yeah, from the leftover uh, meat, or from whether from the fish or from the uh, heat, especially from the eye, from the skin, from the bone, from the scale, or also from the internal organ. And then need to find a way how to produce, how to utilize uh, this kind of the byproduct to produce a more valuable uh, product. And then the product we can use as ingredient in in, in a different type, different variety of the food product, and also as additive, and also as a bioactive, which contribute to the health. So the additive, uh, bioactive is very important. No functional food, we familiar with functional food is come from from the uh, bioactive uh, component. We contribute uh, to the uh, health uh, of uh, food. Yeah. So I think this one, I think most of you may be familiar. So for any processing, we produce around 60 to 70 percent of the byproduct, whether it belong to heat 
or belong to scale or bone or belong to internal organ or anything, especially from the filler industry. Filler industry only A lot of a number of the uh, byproduct, and then uh, we need to discuss how to we need to find a way how to utilize this kind of the uh, byproducts. So actually, uh, from the left of the place, uh, we can we can use uh, uh, we can we can extract the left of the meat uh, by using the mechanical deboning machine. Of course, because we're talking about industry, we will not able to separate the flat, the meat uh, from the frame of the fish manually because we deal with a number of the raw material and then we need to use equipment. So normally we can use a mechanical deboner to collect all of the left of our place from the frame of the piece. And then we can use uh, this kind of the left of our place as a raw material to produce uh, a different product which can categorize a hydrolysate protein. We can produce hydrolysate protein from this kind of level. After from the level from the filler industry, and also we can use this kind of product, uh, this uh, hydrolysis uh, piece of protein, as a source for nitrogen uh, for the uh, fermentation media or for the growth of the bacteria, source of peptide for the growth of bacteria. Is there one example? Of of my uh, uh, my publication uh, in the uh, compressive review in the food science in uh, uh, technology is how to uh, use the uh, byproduct from tuna fishing industry uh, from the loin because normally from the tuna fishing industry we produce a loin or fillet and then a lot of the byproduct there. And then a new look to produce the the better uh, fish protein hydrolysis. So from the level of the tuna uh, processing industry, we can produce a different type of product which belong to a fish protein hydrolysis. And then they can product can you apply in different uh, put a product and also as a, a source for the nitrogen for the media of fermentation or pepton from the uh, bacteria in course. Yeah, so as a sample, uh, how we can produce yeah, uh, what you call uh, hydrolysis protein from the duck because we can divide the place from the tuna whether it belong to uh, red uh, meat or belong to uh, white meat. Actually, red meat if belong to dark meat and white meat actually not really white meat. Yeah, they're not really white. But normally we can divide the meat uh, of the tuna whether it belong to uh, dark meat and also belong, belong to, to light meat. So normally the problem because some of the customers they not prefer to take this uh, dark part. Normally, some of the people they not uh, prefer to take this uh, dark part. So normally for the uh, tuna loin industry. They just only use the light part, the white one. But for the dark one, the level is considered a byproduct. And then we need to find out how to use this kind of byproduct as a raw material to produce a protein hydrolysis. This one is the how to produce the protein hydrolysis. And then apply it to a different type of the product. This is one way to use a byproduct from tuna fishing industry. So, uh, so, so the problem if we produce a uh, fish protein hydrolysis is because it's a, uh, uh, the bitter taste. If we hydrolyze the protein with different enzymes and then we're facing problem with a bitter taste. It's a common uh, problem if we produce a uh, protein hydrolysis. And then we need to find a way how to produce the fish protein hydrolysis with lower bitter taste. Actually, bitter taste is belong to the uh, tryptophan content. And then we need to find a way the suitable enzyme. So during the processing of the fish protein we need to find a way to, to, to find the suitable enzyme with only with, uh, produce the little uh, bitter test. 
So the, the, the bitter taste is one of the problem with, uh, for fish flavor protein. But if we use a, a proper uh, process and we choose as a, as a good, as a suitable uh, enzyme for the production of bitter taste, and then we can able to produce the fish protein with lower bitter taste. And idea that we have some pahit, yeah, because normally for the fish protein, uh, one of the problem for the fish protein is a bitter test. So in, uh, uh, in our previous uh, uh, research, we find the uh, we can use the uh, alkalis. Alkalis they can produce the fish protein uh, hydrolysis with lower uh, beta test. So if we are gonna so can uh, can use uh, what declared from uh, use the the flesh, uh, the byproduct. From the, uh, the sample is this one is my current my uh, new uh, publication uh, with uh, Prof. Sota Pinjakul. We working together to use the uh, 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 byproduct from the salmon industry. So, so we collect the byproduct from the salmon industry, and then we uh, produce the hydrolysis, uh, debited sample uh, hydrolysis, and then we apply in uh, biscuit. And then we find a way how to what call it, uh, the uh, proper uh, percentage suitable uh, for application of the uh, hydrolysis uh, from the debited salmon in the uh, biscuit product. And then uh, we come with a conclusion that we can uh, fortify biscuit with 50, 50 gram, 50% 50 of the uh, protein hydrolysis. Uh, for this material, we use the protein hydrolysis from the byproduct of the uh, salmon industry. Because I mentioned previously, for the fish hydrolysis, the basic problem about the bitter test, and then we need to find a way how to reduce the bitter test of the uh, this protein hydrolysis. So I, again, uh, from the fish hydrolysis, we also can produce uh, product as a sort of nitrogen uh, for the growth of the bacteria, uh, whether from the bacteria or any kind of bacteria. So I will not uh, explain this detail, but this one is one of the products that we can produce from the fish protein hydrolysis, not for, uh, for as ingredient uh, in a food formulation, but as a source of nitrogen for the uh, bacteria growth. I uh, also can produce, we can extract uh, oil uh, from the heat of the byproduct, especially from the tuna. And according to some report, from, we can produce a good quality of the poison oil from the orbital, from the eye of the uh, tuna fish, what we call is uh, orbital oil. And then uh, this kind of orbital oil is very, very uh, uh, good, uh, very high amount of the omega-3 uh, fatty acid. So, uh, it is, uh, so besides from the heat of the uh, fish, we can also extract the oil uh, from the uh, skin uh, or from the uh, uh, flesh of the, or from the internal organ of the uh, byproduct. But if we uh, deal with the byproduct from the tuna, and then we need to uh, aware about the potential of this kind of the orbital oil. Very uh, uh, good quality of the fish oil you can extract from the uh, eyes of the uh, tuna heat. Uh, this is some report uh, about the what the uh, quality of the fish oil that we can extract from the byproduct of the tuna industry, especially uh, from the tuna fillet industry. So we can we can extract the, the uh, oil uh, from the white meat, from the heat, from the eyes, but also even from the uh, red meat of the tuna uh, fish. And each of the uh, oil comes with its own uh, property. But the good one is belong to the uh, orbital uh, oil, except for the eye of the uh, tuna. So there, uh, there's some report, there's some report from my uh, colleagues uh, from uh, University of Malaysia, University of Science Malaysia, because previously I work with uh, University of Science, uh, Science Malaysia. Uh, they have a lot a number of the project, except project related with the uh, extraction of the uh, fish oil uh, from a different uh, fish species. Uh, this one, they, they use extraction by using the supercritical uh, uh, extraction. Uh, they, use, uh, they use a different type, different method to extract the uh, oil from the uh, 
byproduct of uh, the uh, even uh, species. And this one they use uh, Indian and material as stabilized conjugata or it we can it can kembung yeah can kembung in our language it can kembung as a raw material to produce a different type of the uh, fish oil so uh, so beside from the uh, heat uh, of the uh, byproduct we can extract oil we can also can produce gelatin i think most of your students of us is familiar with gelatin and it's still getting about gelatin. So we can produce a gelatin uh, from the skin, from the uh, bone, uh, from the heat, or even from the internal organ of the uh, product. And then we, uh, gelatin is very common. We can apply in different type of the product. And so far, the soft of gelatin is belong to uh, uh, non island uh, gelatin, eh, especially from the sign uh, gelatin. And then uh, one of the uh, gelatin from the marine raw material is a uh, one of the alternative uh, for the uh, gelal halal uh, gelatin. So, uh, today, uh, today so of course, we can apply uh, for food or non food. Uh, product for gelatin, yeah, for confectionery, for dairy and dessert, for bread, and for the meat and fish. And also, gelatin can also uh, also important uh, for the medical and pharmaceutical industry, for the cosmetic, for the photo industry, and also for the clinical industry. So, meaning gelatin is very, very important in our life, whether uh, for uh, food. Uh, product or non food uh, product. So, meaning we need to find a way how to produce a halal gen and then uh, by product uh, from the fish processing industry is one of the alternative uh, sources uh, for the production of halal uh, gelatin. So, and then uh, we can see from this picture uh, the uh, market. So, every year the uh, demand for the uh, market uh, for gelatin is increased. Uh, increase. So meaning we need to find a way how to produce uh, halal gelatin. And then as mentioned purposely, uh, raw material from the um, fish processing byproduct from the fish and meat processing industry is a, one of the potential raw material to produce uh, halal uh, gelatin. Because so far it's our one, uh, 95 percent, 90 percent of the uh, 90 to 95 percent of the gelatin is belong to non-halal gelatin. So halal gelatin normally is around uh, two to five percent only contribute to the total production of the uh, gelatin. So in this, we can produce uh, gelatin uh, whether from the skin, whether from the freshwater fish, and from the marine fish. And then the quality of the gelatin that we produce from the byproduct is comparable. Is comparable if we compare with the premium uh, profile uh, gelatin, meaning uh, we have some potency there to produce a gel uh, halal gelatin with uh, good quality in terms of the uh, gel strength uh, or any uh, properties required for the application of uh, gelatin in different type of product. According to this report, we can use a fresh water fish tilapia. Uh, whether for black tilapia or uh, red tilapia, and then the gelatin produced from the skin of this kind of product is comparable compared to the uh, premium uh, gelatin. So, also uh, from the shrimi, from the shrimi, and then we can uh, produce uh, gelatin. A lot of uh, report related with the uh, production of the gelatin from the uh, byproduct. This one is from the uh, one of my colleagues in uh, University of Science Malaysia, uh, 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 Dr. Nozia, uh, previously she worked on the uh, byproduct from the swimming industry. So they collect a sample from the swimming industry and produce the uh, gelatin. And then the, uh, on the gel strength of the, the gel strength of the gelatin is comparable uh, with the uh, bombine uh, gelatin. Uh, also, be, beside from the skin of the fish, we also can produce the gelatin from the bone and also from the scale. This one may be not, 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 not considered popular, but there's some opportunities there to extract, to produce the gelatin uh, from the bone and scale of the uh, uh, fish. Because normally, if you want to produce look, uh, gelatin, normally, you take with the skin or oh, no. We can 
produce a gelatin where they form the bone or scale of the fish, not only from the skin of the fish. This one is a detailed information how to produce a gelatin from the fish bone and scale. It can refer to this kind of the public. I will not detail, but I can, but I can mention to all of you the quality of the gelatin extracted from the fish bone and fish scale is comparable. Uh, then uh, premium uh, gelatin, whether from uh, porcine or porcine uh, gelatin. We are can also produce uh, the gelatin uh, from the duck feet. So because normally, uh, previously I saw work from uh, with the byproduct from the poultry processing industry, and then one of the byproduct from the poultry processing industry is a feet. A bagian kaki ya, bagian kaki ayam, bagian kaki iti, bagian kaki kuyu. And then we can use this uh, feed, uh, whether from the duck feed, a quail feed, or chicken feed as raw material to produce a good quality of the gelatin. Uh, this one is uh, one of, of my, my previous student in USM uh, compare the physical, physical and functional property of duck feed with the bovine gelatin. And according to previous report, the quality is uh, comparable. So meaning we can produce the halal gelatin from that feed. Yeah, daripada kaki iti, yeah. uh, daripada kaki iti, we can produce uh, also uh, gelatin. We also can produce, uh, this one also uh, from the duck feed gelatin, and then we can apply uh, to uh, food uh, product. This one also belong to my previous uh, research with my um, uh, student working on the uh, different uh, uh, extraction method. So because we need to produce, we need to find a way how to extract the gelatin uh, in a proper way in with the uh, high yield and also uh, sometimes we maintain the quality of the resulted uh, gelatin. Because as I mentioned to the, we can also can produce the uh, gelatin uh, from the uh, uh, quail feed. This one uh, for uh, my, my previous student, uh, USOP, working uh, with the uh, quail uh, feed. In the quail feed, we extract the gelatin from the quail feed where they by using the uh, lactic acid. So we produce a lactic acid soluble uh, from the uh, quail feed, they put a kaki kuyu, and then we compare with the calf skin collagen, and then the result is comparable. So, meaning there are some potential to use a byproduct from the poultry industry as a raw material to produce a halal uh, gelatin. So, from the bone, so besides to produce a gelatin, we can also to produce a bone powder. We can produce a bone powder, especially let's say we deal with the tuna frame. The huge, the very big size of the tuna, and then we can whether we can produce, we can extract the gelatin from the tuna bone, or we can produce a bone powder from the tuna frame. Then we can apply in different product product because this one, uh, especially from the lady, from the uh, woman, for the woman, they uh, facing a problem osteoporosis, yeah, lack of the uh, calcium because of the. Uh, the, the so and then we can use uh, this kind of the fish powder, fish bone powder, uh, to fortify calcium, a source of the calcium, and then we can apply it to different uh, type of the uh, product. And then the color of the uh, fish uh, bone powder is look like similar with the uh, milk powder. So, so we sometimes uh, we are not, we not able to differentiate between the uh, fish powder and uh, milk powder. This is one they say can uh, we can uh, for that we can use we can apply to different biscuit. So we can use the uh, bone powder as uh, to fortify the calcium in a different uh, food product, especially for the uh, biscuit. We can also uh, can uh, increase the calcium content in the meal product you know, as a source of the calcium in meal product. This is a report for my uh, previous student uh, working on the application of the tuna bone powder uh, in the uh, bakery product. So uh, we use a different percentage of the uh, tuna bone powder and then uh, apply to uh, baking product. And according to the result, uh, panelists not able to differentiate uh, whether the product uh, fortified by uh, tuna bone powder or not. Meaning uh, the panelists can accept 
the bakery product with some amount of the uh, tuna bone powder. This one, the result, you can see the result there. We can use a, uh, what we can fortify the bread and cookies uh, with uh, tuna uh, bone powder without affect the uh, sensitivity of the uh, product. Of course, sensitivity is still there. So meaning uh, customer, and meaning panelists can enjoy, still can enjoy the cookies and the bread fortified uh, with a different uh, percentage of the tuna bone powder. Uh, yeah, so, uh, beside from the tuna uh, bone powder, we can also produce uh, uh, fish bone powder from uh, different uh, fish species. This one from the uh, Lisa Plamini, they produce the calcium powder from the fish egg. So, uh, as mentioned today, we have, a deep, we have many, uh, lot of uh, fish uh, uh, species, and then we can start, we can we can study, we can extract the bone powder from different uh, fish species and find a way how to uh, apply in a different uh, food, uh, product. Uh, this is also, uh, so beside uh, for the production of the uh, fish uh, bone powder, we can also extract, we can also use the byproduct from the fish processing uh, industry as a, a bioactive component to produce a bioactive component with uh, comes with some uh, anti hypertensive effect. So a lot of uh, number, uh, a lot of uh, evidence uh, that we can uh, produce a fish protein hydroxide with anti hypertensive effect. This one, they uh, extract uh, the, uh, from the tuna and then the product comes with very good anti hypertensive uh, effect. So, also for, uh, not only from the fish, but also from the uh, mollusca. We also can product, we can also can produce the protein hydrolysis uh, come with anti hypertensive, anti cancer, and antioxidant activity uh, by using the, the uh, proper enzyme, by using the enzyme, and then we can produce the uh, protein hydrolysis with high anti hypertensive, anti cancer, and antioxidant activity. This one is a report from the Alemans, they produce the protein hydrolysis from the squid. Maybe we need to explore about the potency in our squid uh, to uh, produce the fish protein hydrolysis with high uh, activity of the antioxidant, anti cancer, and anti hypertensive. Uh, it's a similar one. So we, uh, we can also uh, produce the uh, uh, product uh, from the upon uh, protein, this one from the uh, byproduct of the uh, poultry industry. So. Uh, this one also from the internal organ. Uh, so meaning from the byproduct of the poultry, we can also can produce the piece of, uh, protein hydrolysis with a similar uh, procedure uh, and comes uh, with uh, high uh, anti uh, SA inhibitory uh, as a anti hypertensive uh, property. Uh, so for the antioxidant, uh, there are some some evidence. I mentioned this evidence that we can produce a uh, protein hydrolysis with high antioxidant activity from a different species, and then the activity is uh, comparable uh, with the uh, commercial antioxidant. We can apply to retard the oxidation uh, in uh, high uh, fat content of different uh, food and product. Because normally, if we use too uh, much uh, uh, synthetic antioxidant, we will facing a problem. Because normally, in order to retard the oxidation of the uh, high fat content of product, we need to add uh, with some synthetic antioxidant. So normally, the BHA, BST, propylic and anti-BSQ is a common synthetic antioxidant applied as a as a ingredient additive uh, in the different type of the product and then we can replace or at least we can reduce the uh, use of this kind of the synthetic oxidant uh, with the uh, material extracted from the uh, fish or from the uh, poultry and byproduct as mentioned uh, previously this is a feeder also uh, from the fish care of the uh, skip yet to now uh, we can also can produce a product with high 
antioxidant activity and also functional properties. So meaning we no need to use a, a huge, huge large amount of the synthetic antioxidant, but we can replace it with the natural antioxidant up from the fish protein hydrolysis. This is what also we can mention to you from the dark muscle pay product in order to replace the use of the synthetic antioxidant in a different uh, type of the product. So I think this one is similar. So the ability of this person to ex to uh, to uh, uh, to expose a student a different type of the fish product. This one they use the uh, uh, from the kakap uh, yeah from the from the from the can kakap yeah from the lotus cutlifer yeah? uh, and then produce uh, from the sebas skin uh, with high antioxidant uh, properties. Uh, so a lot of video analysis something like that. Uh, we can this one from the dark skin. Uh, from the byproduct of the poultry industry. So meaning we can produce the very good uh, product from the uh, byproduct, whether from the fish byproduct or from the uh, poultry byproduct. So this one also for anti-cancer, maybe not common, uh, but also can produce a fish protein set with anti-cancer uh, activities yeah? uh, because uh, anti-cancer activity they, we have the plafronate, the phenolate, the the carotenate then the component of the fish protein that really set uh, can able uh, to 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 be that as a, uh, as a function as an anti-cancer. There are some evidence there, uh, normally they use a cancer like cell line MCF7 to study the anti-cancer activity of the fish uh, protein hydrolysis. This one, they use a tuna from the, they extract the, uh, the uh, hydrolysis protein from the uh, tuna dark meat. Also, this one also uh, the evidence uh, of the ability of the fish protein hydrolysis uh, to, to for the as a anti cancer. Uh, this one also there's a, so a lot of evidence. So meaning a lot of evidence uh, uh, about the uh, potential of the uh, fish protein uh, byproduct or also from the protein byproduct as a anti cancer agent. Uh, this one also, this one also from the different from the uh, different uh, fish species. Yeah, I think we I don't uh, uh, can uh, explain in detail this one about the antioxidant and the positive activity of the peptide. Yeah, from the loss. Uh, maybe uh, we need to explore uh, from uh, different our fish uh, species. Uh, then the fish protein also come with the antimicrobial uh, properties, so we can also can. Uh, produce the uh, apis protein actualizer with antimicrobial activities. So this one evident they extract the fish protein set and from the squid uh, from the uh, squid and tuna skin and then test the antimicrobial activity and then find uh, the found the antimicrobial activity of the peptide uh, fraction from the uh, squid and tuna skin is very good. So you can apply to different uh, type of the microbes. I think this one is similar. So uh, the last one that I want to highlight this one also is for the antimicrobe. Uh, this one also for the antimicrobe. Uh, this one I want, I want to highlight is the potential of the uh, fish protein hydrolysis as a pooling, uh, healing, for healing agent. Jadi untuk menyembuhkan, I think uh, three to four years ago is quite famous, uh, quite quite famous about the uh, what the uh, uh, practice uh, from the Brazilian doctor to put some uh, tilapia fish skin uh, to the uh, what the as a wound healing uh, agent. Uh, we can apply this kind of this uh, uh, practice uh, whether for human uh, or for animal. They directly use copper as a as a open skin of the uh, victim with the uh, skin of the tilapia fish. But as a scientist, we need to find a way. We need to find a right uh, proper way how to explore uh, this uh, wound healing effect uh, from the uh, skin of the uh, fish uh, product. 
So actually, for, for for this time being, I have one PhD student working on the uh, wound healing uh, effect, wound healing potential of the from the collagen hydrolysis. So because we can produce the collagen from fish collagen, we can produce uh, gelatin, uh, collagen from the skin. Um, um, the uh, piece uh, by product, we can produce collagen, and then we need to hydrolyze uh, collagen. This kind of thing, and then we can use, we can test the wound healing uh, effect of this uh, collagen hydrolysis, uh, uh, hydrolysis with a different uh, type of the enzyme, and then we need to test to the animal one. A previous result, so uh, the uh, collagen uh, hydrolysis come with very good wound healing activity. So we can say from this picture, there's an animal, that we treat the animal uh, with collagen uh, hydrolysis from the salmon or from the tilapia. And then uh, this one, the wounding, they can cover, uh, which can close the open uh, skin is uh, faster than the uh, control one. This is control one. This control one is MC, the media control, normally belong to saline solution. This one is belong to treatment, which come from the collagen hydrolysis, from the salmosala, and also from the tilapia. Those are evident, uh, for evident, they use uh, Alaska Polar and come with a similar result. The similar evident and that uh, uh, protein uh, from the uh, collagen hydrolysis able to uh, act as a wound, wound healing uh, agent uh, for the uh, open skin. Yeah. Uh, this is my current PhD student, uh, Mr. Aziz. Currently, he is working uh, for the potential uh, surimi byproduct as a uh, to uh, as uh, as a wound healing agent. So, but uh, he is still now on, on the uh, middle of the research to find a way the suitable enzyme for, for the extraction of the uh, fish uh, skin from the surimi byproduct uh, with high uh, property uh, of the wound healing effect. So as a conclusion, so as a conclusion, we can see this one, that byproduct, whether from the fish or poultry product is come, uh, is uh, some potential to develop the uh, economy and more valuable product that we can use as a source of the protein, a source of the uh, oil, a source of the gelatin, or a source of the uh, calcium product. And then from the byproduct, whether from the uh, animal-based uh, byproduct or from the fish-based uh, uh, byproduct, uh, we can produce more available product which come with some activity such as antihypertensive, antioxidant, anti-cancer, anti make or even as a wound healing agent. I think I want to close my presentation about the recent update on the meat and fish processing uh, technology focus and the production of the uh, available product uh, from uh, the byproduct. I think I thank you, Mr. Setianigo for your time given. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Professor Nurul Huda, for your remarkable and insightful presentation. Uh, we can add a lot of knowledge and your perspective on the, uh, especially uh, fish uh, product utilization. Well, uh, now we uh, jumping to the uh, question and session. Uh, your participant. I'm sure that you all have many questions there because it's very, very interesting presentation. So please click the right hand button to directly ask the question to the speaker. You can uh, unmute or uh, your microphone and mention your name before asking. And uh, you can also type your question uh, in the chat column in uh, the YouTube or the Zoom. Please. Any question? Okay, uh, to Bapak uh, Zukrufus Zaman, please uh, asking your question directly to Professor Nurul Huda. Please. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Bu Dr. Uh, Pipin. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, very good morning to Professor Nurul Huda. Uh, first of all, I would like to thanks uh, to you, Prof, because you, uh, for your willing to become one of our editor in uh, journal THP, ENS. Uh, I'm quite interested with the fish gelatin uh, because it is still a lot with uh, halal food industry. And, and I'm also dealing with a few researchers that, that uh, what is called doing their research on fish gelatin, such as uh, Professor Jamila from uh, UPM, which is uh, did the research on tilapia fish uh, gelatin, uh, fish, fish gelatin. As you know that fish uh, waste is very, very huge. Uh, this is a means of uh, waste utilization to convert food, uh, fish processing waste into something that uh, have a more beneficial uh, matter including this uh, gelatin. But as, as I know that uh, comparing, compared to other, to, to other gelatin, which is mainly from bovin or, or pig uh, gelatin, uh, as, as I know, uh, maybe you can uh, correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong, as I know that there is a big major drawback in a fish gelatin uh, compared to, to the main uh, resource, which is that the fish gelatin uh, is lack of proline region in its collagen, which the gelatin is uh, come from. Uh, and as I know that the, that the combination of glycine proline and hydroxyproline is, is one of the uh, amino acid sequence that characterize the thermal stability of the gelatin, which is uh, for sure it is uh, a very important uh, char character for, uh, for the industry, especially in food industry or in pharmaceutical industry. So, uh, from your experience, from your experience, is there any uh, any way out to to solve this problem of uh, regarding the the proline uh, lack region in, in the collagen of of fish, especially from maybe from cold water fish. And the other one is also related to the bloom strength of the of the gelatin itself. Uh, uh, I know that the bloom strength is not uh, not as high uh, high enough as compared to the uh, animal uh, uh, warm blooded uh, animal gelatin. Thank you, Prof. Nurul uh, Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dr. Zukuru Taman. Okay, uh, Dr. Setia, can I can I uh, answer directly the question from Dr. Sukuru? Of course, you can answer directly, Prof. Okay, okay thank you, Dr. Sukuru. It's a very really interesting question. Yeah. So uh, we, we need to understand that uh, each species come with its uh, property. So, but in general, uh, according to some report, look like the gelatin from the uh, fish, uh, uh, fish come with a, a slightly lower quality compared than uh, bovine and the porcine gelatin. But we need to understand, uh, we, we don't need to, what you claim, sometimes it depends to our application. It depends to the, uh, the uh, target of the uh, food product that you want to use, they will uh, or the, uh, this uh, produce a gelatin. So if the bloom strength of the quality of uh, this produce gelatin is not as good as uh, uh, in terms of the bloom strength, it's not as uh, strong as a porcine and uh, porcine gelatin, then we need to find the suitable food product suitable product, uh, the right food product suitable for the property of the produced uh, fish gelatin. Because sometimes we don't need to use the uh, gelatin with very uh, high bloom strength, depend to the product. Some product mainly need the, what you call, the soft texture, no need the hard texture. And then we can use uh, the uh, fish product, the gelatin from the uh, fish gelatin, which come with a moderate uh, bloom strength. Because we don't need, actually we don't need to use a, a very uh, strong um, bloom strength of the raw material because it depends to the uh, property of the uh, product. 
Uh, so, but I believe, I still believe, because we have a lot of fish species. Maybe some fish species come with a very good uh, look strength, very good quality of the agility in terms of the physical property, especially for the bloom strength. And then it's our uh, what it is our responsibility to explore. I heard uh, from my colleagues in uh, University of uh, Jaya, if I'm not uh, in the mistaken, they found one of the uh, first water fish, endemic first water fish, which come with very, very uh, uh, good quality of fertility, with, with very uh, strong uh, uh, bloom strength. So, uh, because we have a lot of uh, fish species, and then it's our uh, part to explore. Uh, uh, what you call it, the uh, property of the gelatin from a different species, whether from the uh, freshwater fish or of the uh, marine fish. And then for the question how to uh, deal with the lower quality of the uh, gelatin uh, from the uh, freshwater uh, or from the uh, fish, we can, uh, we can use a different modification. We can modify. We can modify the fish gelatin uh, to in order to improve its uh, physical properties. Uh, Previously, I have some uh, what you call uh, some uh, uh, project with my uh, previous student working on the succination of the uh, fish gelatin in order to improve the gel strength, the bloom strength of the gelatin in this work. So we can use a different method uh, to modify uh, the protein in order to improve the physical property of the uh, gelatin. So is it, but, uh, but I think uh, the right way uh, for this time is to explore, to try to explore different species because we have a lot of uh, fish species. So maybe we able to find the uh, fish species which very, very good in terms of the uh, physical property of the gelatin. So another way to produce a gelatin is to produce a protein hydrolysis with more beneficial, with, with some bioactive component. So after we uh, the hydrolysis, the, uh, the, uh, we have to produce the gelatin, and then the gelatin we need to hydrolyze us by using the different type of the enzyme. And then the gelatin hydrolyzed, and then we can study the bioactive component, the bioactive activity, whether as antioxidant, antipendency, anti-cancer, anti microbe or even as a wound healing agent. It's more important, it's more uh, beneficial uh, for, uh, for human health because it's, it can contribute, uh, it can, it can produce with uh, uh, more affordable product than the gelatin one. So uh, this is my work by Alasper, how to deal with the low quality of the current uh, gelatin. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Noruhuda, for your great explanation. And uh, maybe uh, anyone will uh, ask directly to Prof. Noruhuda, please uh, click the right hand button. I think it's... Uh, no one has... Uh, more question yet, so I will read the question that has arrived in the chat room. Uh, I will start to the first one. The question from our uh, lecturer from the food science and uh, department uh, from Pak uh, Ahmad Ridwan PhD. Uh, the question is, uh, what kind of fish spawn which can be uh, produced uh, to uh, that can produce the gelatin with uh, equal or similar or even better properties with the uh, pig gelatin. Okay, thank you uh, for the uh, Ahmad Ridwan. Yeah, so uh, we have a lot of uh, fish species. We are uh, so uh, uh, I could not mention uh, one by one uh, because the uh, different fish species come with uh, its own uh, properties. So uh, some say uh, the or uh, to some report we can produce the uh, gelatin uh, from the tuna bone, uh, and then it come uh, with uh, good quality of of gelatin, but tuna is a, so a, a many species. 
So for the detail one, I think I uh, we need to what do we get? Uh, we need to go uh, detail uh, for each species. Is uh, 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 what do uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, we can refer to some report, but we need to understand because sometimes uh, if the fish come from a different part, different geographic area, maybe the result is not really similar with our fish species. So as mentioned to as mentioned to Dr. Jacob, it's our responsibility to explore the potential of our fish species uh, for the production of gelatin. Because maybe a different, because we cannot, we cannot, we cannot simply say if the report uh, use a tuna from the ocean from different uh, country, and then we cannot say the quality is similar. As we need to explore by ourselves. I think uh, because uh, each species come with its own uh, property. Yeah, I think it's my answer from the question of the market one. Thank you, Bo Cynthia. Thank you. Uh, we're going to the next question, Prof. Nurul Huda. The question is from uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Ms. Uh, Anastriani. Uh, he asked about, uh, uh, as you mentioned, that the gelatin from the fish byproduct is comparable to the uh, bovine uh, or uh, pig gelatin. So, what are the challenges to drive the massive production and usage of halal gelatin? It's mean, uh, uh, for example, for uh, from fish uh, uh, gel fish gelatin. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hasitia Ningum. I think the problem for if we use a gelatin uh, from the uh, fish byproduct is a consistent supply of the raw material. And we're facing the problem with the consistent supply of the raw material. Let's say we, we according to the result, the, 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 uh, the tilapia, uh, the, the skin from the red tilapia is a good source for the production of gelatin. But if we uh, 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 produce in uh, what you call it, if we enter the industrial scale, we need to come with uh, enough uh, uh, supply of the consistent raw material. Because as mentioned previously, yeah, we, as we know, the species come with its own uh, property. So the problem may be related with the supply of the consistent raw material. But this one, maybe we can, uh, um, uh, of course, we cannot uh, solve the problem in one shoot. So we take part of our responsibility to explore, uh, to study the potential uh, raw material for the production of the gelatin. And then, and then one we able to identify the most potential uh, raw material for the uh, production of the uh, facility, and then we can think how to uh, produce consistently the raw material. Maybe let's say we need to work together integrated technology. So one we able to identify, let's say one is the fish species is pretty good uh, in terms of the uh, production of gelatin from the skin, and then we need to find a way how to for the much production of this kind of fish species, and then let the industry people to run the to to produce the pile, uh, to extract the to, to produce the pile from this kind of the species, and then the byproduct then is used for the production of the gelatin. I think what is a uh, common problem of the utilization of the uh, what uh, is a supply, uh, uh, consistent supply of the uh, raw material. I think this one of my uh, problem challenge uh, for the production of the facility. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nuruda. We're going to the next question, the question from uh, our student. Uh, from Nono City Rahayu, she asking about uh, how uh, do you increase gelatin product from halal and toyib ingredient so that they uh, can save the use of pork skin? Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, Pani, Dr. Setian Nigum. Thank you for the question from the student city Rahayu. So, in order to increase the yield, the increase the production, yeah. So you need to find a way the more suitable method. We can extract gelatin by using a different acid, yeah. We, we can extract by using the different, uh, different, different method, different acid and the different method, and then uh, we can compare. 
uh, we can compare the yield from a different acid and so from different percentage of the acid uh, the, uh, for uh, to produce uh, gelatin. Then we need to check which acid, which concentration able to produce a more gelatin. We need to compare the yield uh, in, uh, in order to produce a more economic process. Uh, at the same time, if we able to come with a more yield, hard yield, uh, the product must be able to perform a good quality of the gelatin because we don't want to uh, lose uh, the uh, component of the quality. So because some extraction method may be able to increase the yield and produce more gelatin, but effect to the quality. So we need to play. Uh, between the uh, quantity and the uh, quality one. Uh, this one is not easy because its piece species, its raw material come with its own uh, property. Maybe uh, there's uh, a method for a method A suitable for the piece A. Method A may be not suitable for the piece B because piece B come with its own uh, property. So for the piece B, I uh, we need to use the method B example until like that. Okay, I think it's uh, uh, my uh, answer for the question from Siti Rahayu, Dr. Siti Ningu. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Professor Nuruda, for your answer. And we're uh, jumping to the next question. Uh, the next question is from our student, Livy. Uh, she is very interesting uh, uh, about the research uh, regarding uh, with fish collagen as animals for healing. So uh, she wants to know, uh, uh, how did the research go to at very first place? Professor Ruda, can you get the question? Uh, okay. can, can you repeat, uh, Dr. Sitenium? I can hear you. Okay, I will repeat. Can you, can you repeat again the question? Okay, I will repeat the question. The question is for our student Livy. Is very see very interesting about uh, the research uh, on. Uh, Hello, can you repeat again? Yes, can you hear me, Professor? Can, can you repeat again? Can you repeat again? Yes. I yes. Can you repeat again the question? Okay, I will repeat this question. Can you hear me, Prof? Professor Ruda, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Can you repeat again? Okay. I cannot hear you. Okay. I will repeat the question from our student Livy. She is uh, very interesting in the research of the animal swan healing. And uh, so uh, she wants to know uh, how did the research go to at the very first place? <sighs> Okay, uh, for the wound healing agent, thank you for the question from the DV. Eh? Uh, the wound, the, my research on the, uh, my and my group research on the uh, wound healing agent of the uh, collagen from the uh, uh, piece by product just start uh, uh, early of this year. We're still on the uh, early step of the uh, project. So actually from, uh, for the first one, we need to identify, we need to identify uh, the potential uh, raw material for the producing of the collagen. We also need to think about the year one. So we need, uh, we extract the collagen from a different species. And then we study the characteristic of the producer edge collagen. And then after that, we need to use a different type of enzyme. So because we need to deal uh, to hydrolysis the collagen, the resulted collagen, use a different type of the enzyme. So uh, when we start, uh, uh, then uh, the resulted uh, collagen hydrolysis, we need to test its uh, property. Yeah, we have uh, some test for the property of the uh, collagen hydrolysis. Before we uh, use this kind of the collagen hydrolysis uh, for the animal, because we. Uh, apply to animal, whether uh, for, with oral or maybe from the, or maybe the different, of the, with a different uh, form of the uh, collagen hydrocet. So as mentioned, but we, according to uh, previous report, but unfortunately it's not belong to our report. We just start uh, using uh, our piece uh, species. According to the previous report, as mentioned, is my slide, there's some evidence. 
CIPDN is that uh, collagen hydrolysate able to uh, act as a wound healing uh, agent, uh, ability to act as wound healing agent. Jadi, the, what you call it, the, uh, the uh, 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 effect uh, for to close the open cut, open skin is more faster than the control one. Mananya meaning uh, if we treat the animal because we need we just uh, we need to use the animal animal as a model uh, the uh, we, uh, the uh, uh, the time we, uh, required to make the uh, the close uh, the open the cut um, close is more faster than the the control one the evidence uh, from the previous report but we need to use uh, you need to use our own uh, raw material or an enzyme uh, to find the uh, wound healing activity of our raw material. Uh, this one, my, my, my answer for the question from DP. We still on the early stage uh, of the uh, project related with the wound healing agent of the different uh, byproduct. And I welcome if maybe uh, some of the lecturer from, or some student of the WNS uh, uh, interest to uh, set up some collaboration and then we can share the method. And then maybe some of the uh, lecturer or student at uh, the witness can run uh, some uh, project, some uh, related with the wound healing effect of the uh, byproduct from the fish species available uh, in the uh, area of the awareness. Okay, thank you about sitting group. Okay. I hope I answer the question from DP about the wound healing agent of the byproduct. Okay, thank you, uh, Prof. Nurohoda. Uh, so the next question is from our student again. It's from Hilmina Susanti. Uh, she wants to uh, get your uh, opinion or your strategy to overcome uh, her village uh, problem. Uh, her village uh, uh, has uh, many... Uh, Rajungan uh, in Indonesia, similar with crab. And uh, during uh, this uh, COVID pandemic, so uh, it could, uh, uh, couldn't uh, to export it. So uh, uh, it will uh, decrease the quality. So uh, what's the strategy to, uh, I mean, to preserve uh, the uh, rajungan? And if she want to know, can the, to preserve it, the, uh, Rajungan uh, uh, to uh, uh, with the whole cells. Is it possible to preserve the rajungan with the whole cells? Uh, is it possible uh, uh, to conduct it by the uh, very, very simple uh, technique? Thank you. Uh, uh, can you repeat again? Uh, uh, Dr. Sitini Room, I cannot, I cannot hear you. Can you repeat again uh, the question? Okay, the question is from our student, Hilmira Susanti. Uh, she wants to uh, get the uh, opinion or the strategy to overcome the, uh, her village problem. It's about the overproduction of uh, rajungan uh, according to the uh, COVID pandemic. So uh, they can export uh, this rajungan. So she wants to know, how to preserve the rajungan with the whole cells? Uh, is it possible? And uh, is it could be conducted by the uh, simple uh, strategy or simple technique to preserve rajungan with the whole cells? Uh, okay, okay, okay. I got the, the question. Yeah, one is related a bit the rajungan. Yeah, rajungan crab. Yeah, how to preserve the quality of the uh, Crab, yeah, for the, the whole crab, yeah, because normally for the uh, for the crab, uh, uh, customer looking for the fresh one, uh, for the fresh one crab, yeah. So meaning, uh, even uh, for some restaurant, they looking for the live crab, uh, live crab, then then they cook uh, directly in the restaurant. So uh, you know, for, for what you call it uh, to preserve the the whole shell shell of the Okay. I think this one, um, uh, uh, this is a spot like, 
so because I then need to understand the, the question. Uh, I think for the, the, the camp, you, you, we can uh, uh, what you collect uh, for the uh, for the camp. Uh, uh, we can then need to understand the union symbol of the camp. The camp may become unprofitable because uh, many people the collect call not sell the union because it is export. The wholesale. So this one is a new for me because normally for uh, we uh, it's the the uh, what you, the customer looking for the uh, press one. Right? They need to represent this one. For the uh, uh, normally uh, I don't see any uh, what the present uh, possibility to one of the possibility to uh, produce a frozen cap, frozen uh, cap. The whole frozen is a possible. What? Uh, for the uh, this is the product of the product is sort of common now. So one of the way is uh, to produce a frozen cap, but uh, for the frozen cap maybe uh, we need to use our proper uh, freezing uh, process to produce a frozen uh, cap, uh, frozen rajungan, even for rajungan. But uh, we need to also understand that uh, during the freezing process, yeah, some changes uh, will take place uh, in, inside the cell of the uh, cap. This one I have no uh, correct, I know detail uh, answer yet uh, for the uh, freezing of the uh, rajungan, possibility to freeze uh, the uh, rajungan, and then the effect of the uh, freezing of the rajungan uh, on the quality of the uh, flesh inside the shell of the rajungan. But I promise I will find a way, uh, I will update my, my, my knowledge on this. Uh, problem, uh, if possible, to freeze uh, the uh, rajungan and see whether any uh, uh, any uh, what uh, any effect uh, from the uh, freezing process on the quality of the uh, uh, rajungan uh, um, uh, the place. So let me I will finish away because the uh, freeze uh, frozen rajungan I think is not common because most the cap is market in the press uh, form. Okay, I think uh, this one, I think I hope to answer the uh, question from the Halima, uh, uh, Hilmina, Susanti. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Nuhuda. Uh, I get the direct equation from Dewa Putu, so I will invite him to uh, directly uh, ask the question to Professor Nuhuda. To uh, Dewa Putu, please. Uh -huh. Okay, good afternoon, Professor. Thank you for letting me for, uh, to give my questions to you. And and before that, thank you for your wonderful presentations today. And I'm really curious about, uh, especially for the for the slide that describe that tell us about um, productions of gelatin based based from food skin, uh, fish skin, and and bone. And my question is about uh, which one is uh, that have higher production yield, uh, whether it's uh, uh, the fish skin or the fish bone. And another question is uh, which one that harder to get for. And that's all for my questions. Thank you, Professor. Okay, uh, thank you, Dewa uh, Putu. Okay, call. Of course, we, we can use a uh, different uh, raw material, whether from skin, whether from bone, or from scale for the production of the uh, gelatin. But uh, if we use uh, for the internal of the air, uh, uh, we can refer to the fish skin because the fish skin comes with a low mineral uh, content. But if we use the uh, raw material, High mineral content, and then we need to conduct demineralization by using the ADPA, something like that. So, in terms of yield, we can, we, uh, the, so far, the skin is considered the best raw material for the producing of gelatin uh, because we no need to conduct the demineralization process. But if we use a bone or scale, so because the high amount of the uh, Minerals there, we need to conduct the demineralization process because the gelatin comes with 
uh, specific uh, regulation. As I remember, the mineral content must be not more than two percent. So if we use a um, uh, from a piece one from the uh, 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 scale or even from the dark pit, yeah, dark pit, uh, dark pit one, we need to conduct, we need to uh, demineralization process in order to reduce the mineral content. But the mineral content is quite low in skin, so meaning uh, in terms of yield. Uh, we can refer yet yeah, is uh, skin considered uh, potential raw material uh, for pollution of the gelatin uh, with um, low uh, content of the mineral. I think it's my uh, answer, the Dr. Sitya Ningum. Thank you, uh, Professor Nurhuda. Uh, this is a uh, more and more question uh, to you, but uh, I will uh, choose uh, several questions uh, because uh, the time is uh, so limited. So uh, I will ask the one question again. It's from our lecturer, uh, from Budian Rahmawati Avandi. Uh, she is wondering about um, many fish collagen supplement. Does fish collagen have a high bioavailability and always halal? Which is uh, which one is effective for wound healing, or a consumption, or uh, applied directly to the wound? And the second question is, uh, you mentioned about uh, taking heat up. Is it the red muscle of fish that has the potential to contain histamine? And the third question is, uh, has there been any research on antioxidant? Anti hypertension, etc., in processes, uh, processed fish product because the process, uh, of course, will decrease uh, the uh, functional uh, compound present in the fish uh, product. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Sitenum, and also Dr. Budian. Yeah? So let, let me answer one by one. Yeah? So please remind me uh, one is about the uh, piece uh, collagen, yeah? piece collagen say, with high availability and average life. Uh, which uh, one is effective as a wound healing effect? Uh, as mentioned to, uh, pre uh, during my presentation, uh, the knowledge about the wound healing agent uh, of the uh, collagen is still limited. Uh, we just refer to the uh, what you clear to the uh, uh, some uh, published report. So our knowledge on the uh, ability of the uh, collagen hydrolysis as a wound healing agent is still limited. And then, so why uh, me and my uh, PhD student now uh, try to study the uh, this kind of the uh, uh, wound healing agent uh, from the uh, fish uh, collagen hydrolysis. So uh, 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 as, a, as you uh, uh, for so for the comparison, uh, which one is more effective or whether oral consumption and applied directly or to the wound uh, to the wound? Maybe next year we find the uh, the answer uh, because next year we will enter the uh, step uh, application of the uh, our product our collagen hydrolysis uh, to the uh, animal. So for this time being, I have no answer for your question. So we can refer to the some uh, report, but normally the report, available uh, report, no, they not compare between the oral uh, consumption, oral administration, and applied directly uh, to the world. They, I don't uh, find any uh, publication that, that try to uh, differentiate the effectiveness of the uh, uh, collagen hydrolysis as one healing agent by uh, compare. Uh, the way we apply in this kind of um, say wound healing. But later, on, but later on, if I find the if I find the the, 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 the publication or the report, I will share to you. Because I so need to we also need to prepare. We also me and my student also need to come with justification with uh, with method is uh, more practical to test the effectiveness of this, uh, our uh, collagen hydrocell, whether by oral administration or apply directly on the wound spot. Okay, the 
question number two. Uh, uh, I think red meat, yeah, red meat, yeah, meat. yeah, yeah. Red, uh, red meat is considered red meat or dark meat or daging hitam. Yeah, consider normally is related with high amount of the uh, histamine. Uh, normally because the yeah, red meat yeah, uh, yeah potential to contain it. So why sometimes uh, some people some people uh, they uh, do not prefer to take this kind of red meat because the test is uh, easy to what uh, it's not as good as the white meat because the uh, what you the oxidation is there so because they high fat content and also and also uh, also uh, with the uh, possibility to come with high amount of the histamine. So why normally if we want to produce uh, to use this kind of the product, we need to understand need to use the uh, good quality of the raw material. So meaning if we want to produce a potuna uh, hydrolysate or hydrolysate protein from this kind of the daging hitam get meat or dark meat, we need to use the uh, press the good quality of the raw material because as we understand one the histamine there so we're not able to reduce the histamine content anymore with any processing method so uh, this, uh, as the uh, last uh, question is about the uh, anti hypertension eh, of the uh, can you remind me again Ibu, uh, uh, the uh, yes, uh, the, qu the third question from Ibu Dian is, uh, uh, has there been any research on antioxidant, antihypertension, etc. in processed fish product? Because uh, uh, according to the processing, it will decrease the bioactive component, uh, of course, the functional component uh, uh, present in the fish product. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank, yeah, yes. Uh, so as we know, uh, so any uh, processing, especially if we deal with, uh, if we expose uh, the raw material, the protein, uh, the biotic component to high uh, temperature, they will lose the activity. Yeah, so far the research is focused on the uh, unprocessed uh, product. So meaning uh, we need to use a uh, raw material directly. If we use a uh, processed product, so I, I don't think the what do you if the uh, activity is still there, but the activity will be much much lower compared to uh, press uh, material. So uh, as you mentioned uh, in your question, so normally the processing will damage the functional compound, the bioactive compound in the uh, product. So why we need to to extract uh, to hydrolyze uh, the raw material directly from the press one. Yeah, uh, if we are be exposed the raw material with especially with high temperature engine, we lost the activity of our bioactive compound. Okay, I think this is my answer from the question of the Ibu Dian Rahmawati. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Nuruhuda. Yes, uh, one uh, question more, please. Uh, my colleague, uh, Ibu Yani, will uh, directly answer her question to Professor Nuruhuda. Please, uh, Ibu Yani, time is yours. Thank you, Ibu Bipin, for the opportunity given to me. Uh, dear Professor uh, Nurul Huda, I'm wondering about the hydrolysed protein that you promote during your session because uh, you advise that it will be better to use hydrolysed protein rather than maybe the whole protein. So uh, I would like to ask, um, would it be considered more safe uh, to use the hydrolyzed protein to to be added to any kind of product? I mean, uh, to the consumer that are at risk of allergy, because uh, if they are allergy to the protein of fish, but uh, in this, what is it? In other time, you use the hydrolyzed protein. So would it be considered more safe to those type of uh, consumer? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. So, uh, so what I understand about uh, from your question, you want to what you get, uh, my opinion uh, whether we uh, which one is better, whether from the whole uh, material or from the extracted uh, uh, protein hydrolysis. Uh, 
So if you use the uh, first committee or consider or whole raw material, maybe the effectiveness is not there because the compound still uh, you know, uh, mix with other component. But if you use the extracted with uh, collagen hydrogen, and then the, a bit, the activity is still there because we already separate the bio of the uh, compound. There. So we we facing problem about the effectiveness of the uh, product if we use a uh, raw material only. But if we use the, uh, the extracted uh, raw material, uh, extracted product, and then the activity is still there. So in terms of the effectiveness, it's more effective if we use the uh, extracted raw material. And also uh, uh, for the what for some LAG, uh, if we uh, we if we uh, uh, use the uh, extracted uh, uh, product, then we will uh, 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 we, we will uh, uh, decrease uh, we, uh, the uh, potency for the uh, uh, what the great uh, allergy. Because we already extract the uh, target, the uh, the uh, target component according to the uh, proper method. But if we use the whole raw material, maybe some energy is still there. So why, uh, in terms of the effectiveness, in terms of safety, so better to use the extract uh, product uh, rather than we use the uh, the, the whole uh, raw material. I think it's my answer for your question, Buyani. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, it's uh, still uh, many questions uh, to you, but uh, we know that uh, the time is so tight. So I will uh, ask you uh, a simple question. May I, Professor? Maybe it's out of topic, but... Uh, yes, Ibu, please, Ibu. But I want really to know... Uh, as we know that uh, there are several studies conducted to increase unsaturated fatty acids such as omega-3 and, uh, and also omega-6 in poultry and uh, ruminant meat. But on the other hand, these fatty acids uh, are known are more susceptible to uh, uh, oxidative deterioration, especially photooxidation, due to the presence of uh, myoglobin, which can act as a photosensitizer. What is your opinion regarding that? Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so I don't really uh, get your 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 question, Doctor Setia Nigo. But uh, you ask you, I look like you ask you about the pupa from the uh, mega from the three uh, omega three and from the uh, omega six fatty acid. Eh? With uh, where the collect uh, facing with the uh, for say oxidation, yeah. So uh, in terms of my 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 uh, uh, my understanding, uh, uh, for the consumption, uh, we need to come with balanced amount of some omega three omega six. Whether we okay, we simply we say the omega three there's some benefit for the omega three. We need but we, we need to come with the uh, proper ratio of omega three and omega six because normally as you mentioned the polyunsaturated fatty acid is easy to oxidize. So we uh, so we need to come yeah, with uh, look at the proper uh, ratio of the uh, consumption of omega three and omega six. So the so last question about the myoglobin, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not clear. So can you repeat again about the uh, myoglobin, something like that? I'm not able to capture your question, Doctor Sitian. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, there are several uh, studies that are conducted uh, to increase unsaturated fatty acid in uh, poultry and remnant meat by uh, modified the feed. Okay, but uh, as we know, on the other hand, uh, these fatty acids are more susceptible to oxidation deterioration, especially photooxidation, to the present due to the presence of uh, myoglobin, which can act as a photosensitizer, right? So what is your opinion regarding it, Professor? Uh, yes, yeah. Maybe as uh, half of your question, I got your question is uh, what if, like, some product you now come with uh, try to increase the omega three fatty acid content by feed the animal with uh, omega uh, with, with oil, something like that. 
But uh, for me, during my class, so I'm not uh, encouraged my student, uh, my, uh, so anyone uh, to buy this kind of the product look like egg with omega-3. Yeah, look like omega-3, meaning the chicken, the, uh, the lay chicken fit with the uh, 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 some uh, fish oil, something like that, yeah, to increase the uh, amount of the omega-3 inside the egg. But I'm not, uh, what, you said, uh, in, uh, what you said, I'm not really agree with this, of course. If you, the customer, really, really looking for the omega-3 fit, yes, it, just go there, just consume the fish. We have a lot of fish with uh, high uh, omega-3 fatty acid. No need to waste our money or time yeah, uh, by uh, consume the uh, egg with uh, omega-3 fatty acid. Yeah? Uh, also with, uh, with the meat with omega-3 fatty acid. One, because the price is expensive. The, the price for the egg with omega-3 and also uh, chicken meat with omega-3 or even meat with omega-3 is much, much expensive compared to the uh, normal one. Yeah, is a uh, is a my opinion uh, for the uh, meat called enrich or uh, with the some omega three uh, fatty acid from the uh, feed material. So uh, normally I don't recommend people to buy uh, this kind of the product uh, uh, with uh, what uh, produce uh, by uh, some uh, method to increase the omega three fatty. Because uh, for what? For what? If we really looking uh, for the omega three fatty acid, just just buy a fish, just consume fish. We able to uh, we able to um, uh, uh, get the the the, the uh, right amount of the omega three fatty acid with cheaper price. No? Uh, so I just want my 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 answer, my comment from your question that was yesterday. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nuruhuda, for answering all the question. Uh, there are still many, many <laughs> our questions left, but uh, since the time is so tight, so uh, I have to close this uh, question and answer session. I apologize to those whose questions are not yet answered. And... Uh, I think uh, Dr. Setiani, I think uh, if any participant is still uh, looking for the answer for the question, please uh, you can uh, you can uh, WhatsApp me or send me email. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Mahuda. Uh, we will uh, do that uh, to uh, uh, send this uh, uh, the attendees uh, question uh, to you, uh, maybe via WhatsApp, uh, Professor Mahuda. So uh, finally, uh, we're going to the, the end of the uh, session, but uh, to Professor Nurhuda, uh, we would like to give a piece of certificate as our appreciate for your kindness to spend your time here to share the recent update on meat and processing technology. Uh, since we could not give it physically to you, uh, we went to at least give it virtually. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nuruda. This is the piece of the certificate as uh, our appreciation. So, uh, uh, once again, uh, I would like to thank you. Okay, for... thank you. You can send me an email. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, once again, I would like to thank you very much to you all for spending your time joining us today in the second day's guest lecturer's agenda. Uh, as a moderator, I apologize if there are any mistakes in delivering this session. Finally, I will turn over it to Miss Grace as a master of ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, you very much Associate much. Professor Nuru Huda and Dr. Sena Setiani Blum Arifiani for the fruitful session and interesting discussion. Thank you for sharing once again. And ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the end of our agenda. We hope you have found this afternoon's presentation informative and useful. 
I am Graciela Amaris as the Master of Ceremony and on behalf of the organizing team would like to apologize for uncomfortable situation and any possible mistakes done during this event. I will remind that tomorrow next lecture by Associate Professor Dr. Warapon Gunsandip from Kasitrat University with a topic of recent updates on food engineering. So don't forget to join with us again at 10 a.m. Thank you very much for spending time with us today. Good afternoon and see you tomorrow. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.